Well, good evening, each one. We welcome you to our online service of the Open Bible Baptist Church for this Wednesday, December the 16th. We trust the Lord will bless you. We're thankful you're able to tune in with us for our online service. And we're going to uh, begin with a hymn. And this is the hymn, To God Be the Glory. And I uh, brought the wrong hymn book, so you may have to find it in your song books. To God be the glory, great things he hath done, and you'll be able to sing along with this favorite hymn. Okay, let's begin then. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. In the glory, great things he hath done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. To every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. To God be the glory. Let's bow together in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that we can gather in for this midweek Bible study and prayer time. We thank you, Father, for how you meet our needs each and every day. We thank you that we can rejoice in the wondrous plan of salvation that you have for each and every one of us. And Lord, that it's available to the whole world. We rejoice in that the Lord Jesus came down and was born into the human family. And Father, he came as a babe in a manger to go ultimately to the place called Calvary. And Lord, we thank you that he went so willingly for us. Help us, Father, to um, be thankful. Help us, Father, to draw close to thee. We pray, Father, as we study your word, that we would be encouraged. We pray for each one here tonight or tuning in, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would help and give strength to those who are going through times of difficulty. 
We know there have been many who, whom we've been praying for in our congregation, and there are some very serious health needs. And there are some surgeries and some concerns that uh, folks have, and we just thank you, Lord, that we can bring our prayers and petitions to thee. And so, Father, we pray that you would undertake for all the uh, areas of our meeting tonight, for it's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. Let's sing another number together, and this is Joy to the World. As we reflect on the birth of Christ and the coming of Christ, we know he came the first time as a babe in a manger. He's going to come the second time. The Bible says he's going to come as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and this is truly what this uh, hymn reflects, the second coming of Christ. We often sing it concerning his birth, but certainly we have much to have joy about that the Lord has come. He came and he is coming again. Joy to the world. To the world the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. To make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, Far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Amen. Joy to the world. I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles tonight, and let's turn together to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. Matthew, chapter 2, and we are going to continue in our lesson from Lord's Day, and we were looking at, in particular, the wise men that traveled to meet the young Christ child. They followed the star. They came to Herod and said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. We find that they follow the star, and it says in verse 9, and when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And one of the phrases that we were reflecting on was that which is found in verse number 11, and it says that they, they fell down and they worshipped him. They worshipped him. It also uh, says it in verse number 2, For we have, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. The wise men came to worship the Lord Jesus, and as we reflect on the three gifts that they presented unto Jesus, we're reminded of why we ought to worship him. Why we ought to present our bodies a living sacrifice to the Lord. And we were reminded last time that we are created. We were created in the image of God with the very purpose to be able to worship and have fellowship with God. And because of sin, that fellowship and that worship has been broken. 
And because of Jesus and the blood that was shed for us on the cross, his precious blood, to be able to wash our sins away, we can now come back into relationship with God through his son when we invite him into our hearts by faith. And so as a Christian, we have the we have the blessing of being able to worship the Lord. We have the blessing of being able to worship in spirit and in truth. And the wise men came to be able to worship him. They presented the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We were reminded that the gold, it speaks of his birth, that he came as a king. He, Even though he was born in a very lowly place and in a stable and placed into a lowly manger, he came as king. And he was the king of, king of kings. They didn't come looking to uh, present the gifts to, to Herod the king. They were coming to present the gifts to the Messiah, the Christ child. The one, the Bible says, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. And so they came to meet the Lord Jesus and the gold was presented. We're reminded that the gold also pictures deity and it pictures holiness. And gold is something that uh, is very costly. But in fact, in speaking of heaven, gold is something that we'll find in heaven, the streets that are paved with gold, and how our hearts need to be refined, and how the Lord is drawing us closer to himself each and every day as a Christian, as we walk with him. He wants to refine our hearts as gold is purified. And he removes that impurity. And as a result, we reflect his glory. Well, we find that they offered frankincense as well. And uh, this incense, which would have been given, would have been a picture of his life. And we know that incense was used very much in the Old Testament in the temple worship. In fact, there was the altar of incense, which would be before the very Holy of Holies. And only the, the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies in the, on the Day of Atonement, first with a sacrifice for his own sins, but then also for a sacrifice for the sins of others. But on the outer part of that veil, in the holy place, stood the altar of incense, where the, the priest would offer uh, incense upon the altar, and that smell would uh, go through the curtain into the very Holy of Holies, into the presence of God. And we can be so thankful because Jesus has died for us, who has been buried and rose again. And the Bible says that on the cross, at the, the veil in the temple was rent from twain, from top to bottom, upon his death. And uh, he cried, it is finished, and bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And the, uh, the veil was opened. And that pictured access, that we have access into the very presence of God as a believer priest. And we can... Uh, worship him. And the scripture says that we're to bring our sacrifices to him. We're going to look at that in a little bit. But the incense was brought to the Lord Jesus, and that was going to speak of his life, a life unlike any life that had ever been lived, because his life was going to be sinless. His life was going to be perfect and pure and holy. And his life was going to be that uh, example for us to follow. He left as an example that we should follow in his steps who did no sin, neither was there guile found in his mouth. And so we ask the question then tonight, what kind of life was the Lord Jesus going to have? What kind of life was the Lord Jesus going to have as that frankincense was offered to the Lord, the Messiah? And we find throughout his life, we can explain this in many ways. But one of the ways in which we can talk about the life of the Lord Jesus over in Mark's Gospel, chapter 1. Mark, chapter 1, we can say that the life of the Lord Jesus was going to be one of service. And we think of his life as a, a sacrifice. And certainly the cross work of Christ was a sacrifice. But we think of service. He came for others. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. In Mark chapter 1, we find the Lord Jesus serving. It says in uh, verse number 21, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. 
And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one who had authority, that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know, who thy, I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. When the unclean spirit had torn him, he cried with a loud voice, and cried, cried with a loud voice and came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What manner of, what manner, or what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee, and forthwith or immediately when they were come into the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon, or immediately, they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at the even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered them not to speak." because they knew him. And I wanted to come to Mark chapter 1, because this is just a little glimpse of one day in the life of the Lord. I often use this passage in an area when we're speaking of the Lord Jesus serving, because it didn't matter where he was or what the situation was of the town or the dynamic around him. He, he had a heart for others, and he wanted to meet those needs. And some of those needs were physical needs. Some of those needs were spiritual needs. Some of those needs, no doubt, were the emotional needs. And needs uh, in, in the mind to be able to have minds that were settled. And we have all these kinds of needs in our life. The Lord Jesus wants to help us. He came to serve others. He came to give himself. And what kind of life was the Lord Jesus going to have? It was going to be one of complete service. But we could ask ourselves, was it complete service to others? Or was it complete service to his heavenly father? Because we will find that Jesus's ultimate purpose was to do the will of of his father that sent him. And part of that very purpose was loving others, was meeting the needs of others. But it was also being very direct with the truth. It was also being able to tell people that they needed to escape the judgment that was to come. They needed to find forgiveness for their sins. Part of that uh, truth was to go to the religious leaders of the day and to, and to uh, expose them for the hypocrites and for the the lies that they had been spreading to the people. And Jesus ultimately desired to do the will of his Father in heaven. And that ought to be our ultimate goal and desire. And we're going to look at that a little bit more here in a moment. But we could ask ourselves, secondly, what uh, was the life of the Lord Jesus going to have in it? Not just a life of service, but his life was going to be a testimony. His life was going to be one that we would look upon and say, I want to be like Jesus. And in John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse number 14, we read these words. And the word became, or the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I use this verse to talk about his testimony because it says we beheld his glory. Yes, he, he was made flesh. God was made manifest in the flesh. He, the incarnation. He dwelt among us. And what was the testimony? Uh, we beheld his glory, they said, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That was Jesus, grace and truth. 
may it be that as the Lord works in our lives, he could say of us that we have a testimony that we are desiring to have grace and truth in our life because of what Jesus has already done on the inside of us. Notice what he said to his disciples in John chapter 7. Or rather, this was the account of the division that took place. Notice in John 7 and verse number 40, the Lord Jesus spoke in verse 37 and said, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the, Holy, of the Spirit, speaking of the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. So speaking of Messiah. This is that prophet that was spoken of that would come. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto, him, unto them, Why have ye not brought him? And the officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Never man spake like this man. When we think of his testimony, full of grace and truth, the words, the acts, the deeds in his life. That frankincense that was offered to the Lord Jesus as this a little child would be a picture of that perfect, that sinless life. That life were, which would cause people to stop and say, never a man has spoken like this man. There has not been anyone like this, like uh, we had just read over in in Mark, when it said, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For what with authority commandeth the, even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him? What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey his word or his will? Full of grace and truth. What kind of testimony did he have? He had one that we ought to desire in our lives, and we can ask the Lord for strength as we walk with him. And that frankincense that was offered would be that picture of that perfect life, a life of service, a life of testimony, but then also a life of sacrifice. And... This brings me back to the thought that Jesus came, yes, to save others. Ultimately, Jesus came to do the will of his Father in heaven. In John's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus speaks to his disciples. He meets the woman at the well. She goes to tell uh, others about the Lord Jesus. And the disciples come back. They had gone to buy some food. And notice what it says here. In verse number 31, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man bought him, brought him ought to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. To do the Father's will was the ultimate purpose. He says that, that, is, that is the very the thing that was before him. And it was before him even as a child. Remember when they brought the Lord Jesus to Jerusalem as a young boy, as a young man at 12 years of age. Tells us in Luke chapter 2 when his parents come and Mary is looking for him. 
Joseph is looking for him, and they said unto him, his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? That was the ultimate purpose of the Lord Jesus, to do the will of his father. And you know that ought to be the ultimate purpose for each and every one of us tonight. That I would have a desire to do the will of my Father in heaven, just as Jesus had the desire uh, to fulfill exactly what his Father called him to do. Will that mean a life of sacrifice? Yes, it will. And Jesus said we cannot be his disciple if we do not uh, pick up our cross and follow him, deny ourselves. What will it mean? It may mean a variety of different things, but it will mean this. It will mean the very best for us because God only desires the very best for his children that is it doesn't mean that we're not going to face difficulty it doesn't mean that we're not going to face heartache and and sorrow and pain and we are going to face those things because we live in this world a sin cursed world and we live in a body which does break down but we can be assured that when we're in the will of God it doesn't matter what the circumstances are around us we can be thankful that he's there with us and that he won't lead us into something, into our lives, that he is not going to sustain us and hold us through and help us in time of need. Doing the Father's will is, is his ultimate purpose for each one of us. It was his purpose for the Lord Jesus. It is his purpose for you and me. What did it mean for him? What did it mean for Jesus? It meant, it tells us in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. The Father's will for the Son was to go to the cross. The Father's will for the Son was to bear all of our sins in his body on the tree. The Father's will for the Son was to give himself for us so that we could have forgiveness, so that we could find eternal life, so that we could have life and life abundantly. And I trust that we could say that that is our purpose tonight. It is to do the will of my Father in heaven. But as we think about it, the Lord Jesus also came. And what ties into doing the will of our Father in heaven was that Jesus was completely dependent upon his heavenly Father. He was completely resting upon his Father. Notice it tells us, Back in Mark chapter 1, it says, we read of the, they were all brought to the door, and Jesus healed them. And in verse 35, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. We find him also in chapter 6 in verse 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship to go to the other side before on to Bethesda while he sent the people away. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Jesus found time to pray. He knew how important prayer was in his life and he was God. And what should that tell us? We are so weak, we are so needy, how much more important our prayer ought to be in our lives. Jesus, looking to the cross, in his high priestly prayer, prayed for his disciples, prayed for those that would come after in the church age, prayed that there would be unity, prayed that uh, we would 
seek the word of God. He prayed that they would be sanctified. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And we can be thankful that we have the holy and inspired word of God before us to guide us and to lead us. We don't have to wonder what God has said. He has spoken. He has revealed his word to each and every one of us. And we can take God's word with great confidence and great assurance and great hope. Jesus had a life that was completely dependent upon his heavenly father. In the garden of Gethsemane, crying out in agony to his father. On the cross, being forsaken by his father. What that must have been like, we can't even enter into those three hours of darkness. But he does say this in his resurrection. In verse number... 20, chapter 20 and verse 17 of John's gospel, he says to Mary, Jesus said to her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but I go to my brethren and say unto them, or, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and to your father and to my God and to your God. And Jesus the Gospel of John, you'll find many references of the Lord Jesus speaking of his Father. And here again, even in, the, in his resurrected body, he says, I am going to my Father, and to your Father, and to my God, and to your God. And we can be thankful tonight that he is our Heavenly Father, that we can come before him, and that we can worship him. And that, his, and that the life of his son, the Lord Jesus, as the wise men came and they presented the gift of frankincense, that that would picture that beautiful life, that sweet-smelling offering unto the Lord, a perfect life. You know, that's what the Lord is calling us to tonight. He's calling us to a life that would be a sweet-smelling savor before him. And it tells us that these are the kinds of sacrifices that are acceptable unto God. And in Philippians chapter 4, and he says in verse 18, the Apostle Paul says, But I have all and abound, and am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And that phrase an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. I wonder if that is our lives tonight, if that's my life, if that's your life. As the Lord examines our heart by his Holy Spirit, could we say, Lord, I want my life to be a sacrifice unto thee. Lord, I want my life to be that which is acceptable before you, Lord. I want my life, Lord, to be that which is well-pleasing in your sight. How is our service to the Lord? How is our testimony before the Lord? How is our sacrifice, are we that living sacrifice we're called to be? How are we living in dependence on our Heavenly Father as we ought to be? The wise men came and offered the Lord Jesus, the gift of frankincense, and we can come before him and offer him upon the altar of our heart tonight that which is sweet and well-pleasing in his sight. And we can do this because we know him as personal Savior. And if you've invited Jesus Christ to come into your heart to save you of your sins, you know him as your Savior tonight. You can offer those sacrifices that are acceptable and well-pleasing to God. If you've never invited Jesus to be your Savior, you can be that. Invite him into your heart just where you are tonight. You can ask forgiveness of your sins, and by turning and believing that Jesus died for you, he was buried and rose again the third day, you can invite him into your heart just where you are. The Bible says he'll come in and he'll live within us, not just for time, but we'll be with him for all of eternity. And what a hope we have in the Lord tonight. We're going to close our service in prayer. And thank you for each, each one for tuning in tonight for our online service. We do have a number of health needs within our congregation. We have some that are in, uh, speaking of uh, some that we've been praying for that are in the States, that are in hospital. 
Uh, it's a very serious situation. We're also praying for a dear sister who has a surgery this week, if you would keep her in prayer. Uh, we're praying for others who have upcoming appointments and, and medical difficulties. We're praying for strength uh, for, for the body of Christ that we would grow. We know this is a time where we are, we're not allowed to be together publicly, and so we need to pray for one another and uh, that the Lord would strengthen us. And we can just thank him that we can bring all these prayer requests to the Lord and that he'll meet those needs. I know that there's others in our prayer request section of our bulletin and, and those burdens that the Lord has placed upon your heart tonight. And so let's just bow together and uh, close our meeting in prayer and we'll thank the Lord that we can come into his presence. Father, we thank you tonight for this time in your word. We thank you, Lord, for this gift that was offered to the Lord Jesus. They came to worship him, and we worship thee tonight, Father. We thank you that we can pray for one another. And we pray, Father, for those needs that have been spoken of tonight. And Lord, those needs that are upon each heart of each one tuning in. We pray, Father, for our sister who's having surgery this week. We pray you'd be with her. You would strengthen her. You would help her, Lord. We pray, Father, for a dear brother that is uh, in very serious condition in the States, who's in hospital, whom we've been praying for. We pray, Father, that you would give him a sense of your peace. We pray for family, that you would be with them in this hour. We thank you that we can call upon thee. We thank you, Lord, that you know the end from the beginning, and you are the great comforter. We pray for others, Lord, who are waiting test results. We know, Father, there are some in our congregation who have health needs. We pray, Father, that you would give strength, give healing, give help. We pray for those unseen needs, Lord, the emotional needs. We know this is a time of year where we gather together as family. We know things are going to be different next week. And so we just pray, Lord, that you would give a sense of your comfort and your peace even in these times. But thank you that uh, even though there has to be some separation this year, it doesn't change the fact that Jesus was born. It doesn't change the fact that we celebrate his birth, that he is Christ the Lord, that he is the Savior unto all who will call on to him by faith. And we pray, Father, as the gospel goes around the world, many more will come on to him by faith even tonight. We pray, Father, you part us with thy blessing. We ask, Father, that you would undertake for all the needs that have, are spoken and unspoken here tonight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we give thee thanks. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. And may the Lord bless you and, and take care, each one. And I'll be sending out word as to what will be happening on the Lord's Day. And uh, either way, we will look forward, Lord willing, to have a, uh, the service online as well. Take care. Bye-bye.